Hi, I will give a series of lecture on proteomics. Before going to proteomics broadly, I just want to describe what is proteome and uh, what what type of stuff deals in proteomics study. Let's let's first look at what is proteome. So, considering our life or or, or our cell life, the central dogma is something like that DNA then it's converted to messenger RNA and it's converted to protein the, the total content of the DNA of a cell is called genome and the study of genome is called genomics on the other hand total content of protein in a cell is called proteome and the study of proteome is called proteomics so the bottom line is that proteomics is a study of protein content in a cell in a broad sense it's not exactly cell it's maybe cellular function uh, cellular organelle or or it's maybe in a tissue or it's maybe in, it's maybe only in membrane so to study proteum what do you need what should you know so what do you need to know to define a cellular proteome we need to identify each protein, the amount of each protein, and the post translational modification of each protein. And we know that the protein interact with each other for maintaining the cellular function. So we have to identify what type of network are involved in protein. Some people argue that protein chemistry already exist. Why you need proteomics? What is the difference between protein chemistry and proteomics? Well, there have good difference between proteomics and protein chemistry. Basically, protein chemistry include individual protein. It studies on only one protein, and proteomics study on a complex mixture of protein. On the other hand, protein chemistry is just analyze. A complex sequence sequence of an individual protein but for proteomics it will not analyze complex sequence it can but generally it's do partial analysis it's a in protein chemistry it's a emphasis on the structure function by different type of techniques like x-ray crystallography and how is protein function whether it's a it's a, it works like a kinase or it's a receptor or whatever but on the other hand in proteomics study the main aim is to identify what is the protein it is just matching with internet based database so first of all it will identify by a machine and that it will match with the database sequence or database identification source to just identify what type of protein or which protein is that and the most important different thing is that protein chemistry is called structural biology and protein is called system biology it works on whole system the important tool for protein study we call mass spectrophotometry mass spectrometry so mass spectrometry can be used in proteomics for different purpose like uh, mining of proteomes where we will just uh, identify the as many as possible protein in a subcellular fraction or a cell or a mitochondria or even a tissue and uh, sequencing of protein is maybe a novel sequencing of a protein or it's maybe further clarification of your identified protein for example you you find a protein which is not matched in database you can you can say that this is a novel protein so in that case you have to sequence also that protein this type of sequence is called de novo sequencing maybe we'll talk about this later and during cellular function we know post translational modification happens the another important application of mass spectrometry in proteomics that it can easily identify post translational modification a good tool for proteomic analysis uh, by mass spectrometry is protein profiling protein profiling can identify or can differentiate between 
disease and uh, healthy person for example uh, sickle cell anemia rvc and uh, normal rvc can be compared that protein content and it is found that some protein expression up or become lower during the disease condition so it's a good control or good experiment to do protein profiling with controlling ex uh, disease and uh, normal healthy person and most important important application is identification of protein network we know that protein interact with one another during the cellular function for example if you if you remember the uh, receptor rece receptor tyrosine kinase pathway so you know that there are there are series of protein interact together to mediate a response or cellular function this type of cascade or this type of uh, network can be identified by protein it's called uh, um, interactome or what should I say anyway if you look at the human genome you can uh, you can uh, subdivide the protein content some things like uh, uh, signaling protein receptor protein kinase protein blah 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 so there are so many classification of this protein and uh, each classification contains the percentage how many proteins are responsible for receptor how many percentage of proteins are responsible for kinase activity this is just in general no it's not for the proteins it's just uh, considering human genome the protein content should be like this but as you know dna is fixed but or protein randomly changed so considering human genome protein is proteomic is more complex than the human genome because you know after transcribed to messenger rna it becomes protein but it's, it's not only the not only the ending because after getting converted to protein it's uh, goes for post translational modification like glycosylation phosphorylation somalization and um, further even it goes for ubiquitination and degradation by protein system so the turnover and target and their activities depends on the post translational modification so when we are isolating protein content of a cell or a subcellular fraction it may be in any form it may be phosphorylated form it may be in glycosylated form or it may be evacuated form so by considering only genome sequence or only dna sequence you can't you can't tell that these proteins may be like these these these, these. so that's why it's called protein is more complex than the genome that's it for today.